In this episode, let's take a look at all of the new improvements with query casts. Now, if you're not familiar with what that is, it's simply the way that Laravel brings in your columns from Eloquent, from the database, and actually typecasts them for you automatically. This may be something you're familiar with, for example, with the timestamps. Whenever you get your timestamps back, they are actually carbon instances. They're not just your typical string that you would get back. This allows you to speed up all of your development, and it's really good. And up until now, you could do all of your primitive types with them. So let me show you maybe an example of something like that. I'm in the same project that we've been working with, and I do have some posts. Let me jump back into PHP Storm, and let's check out what I have for posts. So we'll say post, give me all of your posts, and I do need to import that, or go ahead and do the full namespace. So we'll do app post, and let me go ahead and go to that one. That address is query cast, and I do need to die and dump it, otherwise you cannot see it. Clean this up, there we go. All right, and there we go. Okay, so I've got one post in here. Now notice that the user ID is a string. Notice how it has quotes around it. That means that it's actually a string of an integer. If we wanted to, and again, you wouldn't just typically do this, but just to show you what an example would look like, if you wanted to typecast that as it comes in, you can add a property here. So we'll say protected, casts, and then we can cast whatever we want. In this particular case, we're going to be looking at casting the user ID, and I want it to be an integer. Okay, I'll hit refresh on this, come back around here, and now you don't notice anything there, but so let's go back over here, and let's say, give me the first one, and then two array. Hit refresh, and there we go. You see that user ID is no longer a string. And just to show you the difference, I'll go ahead and comment this out, like so. Notice the difference right here? There we go. So you see that that is now a string, but it's really an integer, so we can cast that into an integer, and now we have an integer. Pretty cool, right? But the improvement in Laravel 7 is going to be that we're going to get to create custom classes. And we're going to continue diving a little bit deeper with the same example, just to give you an idea of how this works. Let's go ahead and open a brand new directory, and let's call it casts. And inside of casts, let's create a new PHP class. And let's call this new cast user code. Okay, this is just going with the idea that instead of a user ID, we're going to be using this custom user code. Okay, just to make it kind of fancy. So inside of user code, I do need to implement something. And what I need to implement is the cast attributes. It's a brand new contract that comes with Laravel. And then, of course, immediately it says, well, you need to add the following method stubs. And this is what it looks like. You need a get method and you need a set method. PHP Storm does make this very, very simple, but you could just create this on your own right away. And if we wanted to clean it up, we can even get rid of all these comments. And you see that all you have is basically a get method where you're going to implement how you're going to get this particular attribute. And then you have a set method. This is what's going to happen to the attribute whenever it comes through and it needs to be set. Okay, so let me give you just a couple of different ideas in here so you know. Notice that we're accepting quite a few of parameters up here. Let's check out what they are so you see what's at your disposal. Let's die and dump the model. But before I can even use this, I need to tell Laravel about it. Laravel doesn't know about it. So this is what you can do. Instead of an integer, a primitive type, let's go ahead and use that new user code as a class, like so. And do notice that it did get imported up here at the top. So now we're using this new cast. And it's a custom cast. So when I go ahead and die and dump, then we notice that we have access to the entire post. Okay? What else do we have access to? Well, we have a key. Let's find out what's in there. So we do key. And we have user ID. Okay, so that's basically the column name. We also have access to value. Check that out. And that in this particular case, we know it's one. And then finally, we do have attributes. So let's go ahead and die and dump those so that we see what we get. And we basically have an array of everything else in that same exact record. Okay, so you should have just about everything that you absolutely could possibly need. Pretty cool, right? All right, so let's go ahead and create an example here. Let's just say that I want my user code to be something like coders tape, maybe CT dash, and then the value. So that'll be one, and then maybe I want it to be ABC, just a random thing. 
hit refresh, and there we go. Now my user ID has been typecasted into CT1ABC. But now, when this comes back, I do need to do the inverse because I know I can't save that to the database, right? I can only do that one way. And that's where the set method is going to work in. In here, I basically need to do the opposite. So let's go ahead and return. And we could use some of the new fancy stuff. So let's say string, that's illuminate support str, this one right up here. And let's say of, we'll pass through my value. So this is going to be equal to ct1abc. So I want you to give me after the ct dash, ct dash, and before abc. And this should basically give us exactly what we want. If you watch the first couple of episodes, you know that we have these new nice string things that we can use. So we're just taking advantage of them. So I'm saying, give me the string after CT dash. So after this, but before ABC. So together, that'll basically just give me value. Pretty cool, right? So I'll go ahead and take a look at that. And of course that doesn't change. Now, if I was to go in here and maybe change that, let's see how we could do that. Save the post. We'll say post equals post first. I'll bring this up here. This would be in a controller, of course. And I'll say post update, and let's go ahead and update the user ID. We'll hard code something in like CT-123 ABC. And at the end, we'll just two array the same post. All right, let's see what happens here. I'll hit refresh, and sure enough, we have CT-123 ABC. And if we go into the terminal, we can boot up Tinker just to prove that it did work. So let's say post first and there we go user id is one two three so we successfully used something completely different in our getter and in our setter and we did it using one of these custom casts that we just created called user code so pretty cool i really do like the idea of being able to cast these things in its own class because a lot of times the example they actually gave in the documentation is a json so this is something that's even reusable. The JSON decode and JSON encode, that's something that you can use over and over again. You don't have to create one for each model. You could just reuse the same exact one. And same thing for this user code. Every time the user code thing appears in your application, you can just simply typecast it like so, and you'd be able to use the exact same custom cast. So that is the first thing we wanna talk about. The second thing that we wanna talk about is query casts. So let me show you what that would look like. Let me go ahead and delete this all together. And now let's suppose that we have our users and we want to select the last time that they posted, right? We know we have users and posts. So what would that look like? If we have all of our users, then I could say user select an array. So now we could say, okay, give me all of the users, basically everything that's inside the users. We could do that with users dot asterisk. And I also want the last time that they posted. So last underscore posted at. And the way that this works is with a subquery. So we could say post select raw. So we'll say max. Give me the max created at. So basically find the greatest created at that you can find where the column actually matches the user ID. So where column user ID matches up to my users dot ID. Okay. Then at the end of this, let's go ahead and create that. Then we'll die and dump users. Let's go ahead and see what we get. And it says users not found. Of course, let's go ahead and either use the full class or we can import it. Let's go ahead and import it. So we have users and posts both imported up there. Hit refresh. And now when we look in here, we're going to have a nice column here for last posted at. In this case is null, meaning that that user doesn't have any. Ah. I do remember what happened. I changed the user ID to 123. So of course we don't have one. Let's go ahead and change that back. We'll say post user ID. Let's match that back up to one. Whoops. I gotta grab it. I gotta save it. So we'll say post equals post first, and then we can run that again. Post equals one, and then post save. There we go. And just to make sure that everything is good, let's go back in here and let me go ahead and delete that cast. If we refresh this, we should be good to go. Let's see. Open this up. And sure enough, we have last updated app. Now, the thing about this last updated app, and you may think about is, well, we can cast that, right? So if we go in here, we can say, let's add a cast attribute equals 
and let's add it for last updated at. And I want that to be casted as a date. If we said uh, first, let's grab the first one and then let's grab last updated at. We'll hit refresh and nope, it didn't work. You see how this is not being typecasted? That's because we're basically doing a raw selection. And because it's a raw selection, you don't get the nice casting. Whether it's one of those new custom casting that we just talked about at the beginning of this episode, or it's one of the primitive types, it just doesn't work whenever you're using raw queries. So in Laravel 7, we actually get to fix that. So we'll add a new one here, and it's called with casts. So it's a brand new method that you can add, and it basically takes an array of the exact same thing we already had. So last updated at, that is going to be a date. And now when we hit refresh, now we get a carbon instance. So that's the way that that would work. Again, not super common for you to use this. So if you've never even done this before, that's probably okay. But just know that now you have the power of these new casts. We can even use the new custom cast that we did, the user code custom cast. You could do that as well, right in there, right inside with your raw queries. I wonder what that would actually do. Yeah, I guess it kind of works. CT dash and then ABC at the end. So you see that that custom cast is working, even though we're doing a raw select right on a column. So pretty cool feature, not super common to use, but it is a nice improvement because now we do have that consistency of being able to do query casts or even custom query casts in models and in raw selections. So that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Don't forget to check out the podcast Foreign Devs. I do a great podcast with my buddy Yanni, and that is foreigndevs.transistor.fm. We talk about marketing, business, Laravel, PHP, cars, you name it. We have a lot of fun doing it. We release an episode a week, so check it out. You might enjoy it. But that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this particular episode on what is new for Laravel 7. And until next time, my name is Victor, and thanks for watching.